Good morning, everyone, from Ford City, Pennsylvania. This is Chuck King on Thursday, September 9th, 2021, bringing you a morning Bible study. We're studying lessons from Proverbs, and today we are in Proverbs chapter 14, beginning in verse 1. The w wise woman builds her house, but the foolish tears it down with her own hands. We see the importance of the woman of the family to her husband and her children. She is foundational to the success of that family. And she can also be the one who destroys it with foolishness. So again, the contrast between the upright and the wicked, whether you receive the revelation of wisdom and grace and knowledge and fear of the Lord, or if you reject it and choose the way of the world, there will be profound differences in outcomes from these two choices. And that's the reason every individual needs to seek the Lord. You know, without humility, there could be no grace. Without getting rid of the mindset of the world through repentance and faith and the Lord providing grace to overcome, there can be nothing but failure in the lives of people who choose to be worldly. Verse 2, he who walks in his uprightness fears the Lord, but he who de is devious in his ways despises him. So the fruit of your life shows whether you fear the Lord or not, or whether you despise the Lord. It's that simple, that clear throughout the Bible. Verse 3, In the mouth of the foolish is a rod for his back, but the lips of the wise will protect him. So our words matter, our words create either uh, success or failure for us. And uh, when we speak wisdom, we are under the protection of the Lord. But if we speak foolishness, we will come under judgment. Verse 4, where, there, where no oxen are, the manger is clean, but much revenue comes by the strength of the ox. So if you have a hardworking oxen that are producing uh, for you on the farm or uh, in in your business, there will be a mess to clean up. That's uh, an obvious statement here. But if you don't have oxen, then everything will be clean. So we need uh, to have the, the strength of the ox, the provision of labor that produces for us, not uh, laziness or no work that produces nothing. Verse 5, a trustworthy witness will not lie, but a false witness utters lies. So, of course, we need to speak the truth in love, and uh, someone who speaks truth will not lie, but the opposite is true. The false witness can do nothing but lie. I remember Jesus telling the Jews that your father, the devil, always lies. That's his native language, and that's why you are lying. But we need to be trustworthy, truthful witnesses, speaking forth for the Lord without lying. Verse 6, a scoffer seeks wisdom and finds none, but knowledge is easy to one who has understanding. When you are full of pride and arrogance, you will never receive anything from the Lord. There will be no grace available because the Lord will resist you. And that's why the scoffer cannot find wisdom, the wisdom of God. He can find the wisdom of the world through the devil's direction. But if you have understanding from the Lord, uh, he will give you the knowledge you need. Verse 7, leave the presence of a fool or you will not discern words of knowledge. You can't hang around foolish people and have God's discernment. You need to stay away from that influence. Verse 8, the wisdom of the sensible is to 
understand his way, but foolish, the foolishness of fools is deceit. So we need uh, sensible people around us and not fools. This is repeated here in different ways. And uh, it's amazing to me how many Christians fall into the, the trap of listening to fake news and all kinds of of uh, conspiracy theories and things that are pushed by foolish people instead of seeking the wisdom of the Word of God and having the understanding that keeps us from deception. Verse 9, fools mock at sin, but among the upright there is good will. People of the world, they even condone sin. They don't take it seriously. But those who are righteous know the difference and do what is right. Verse 10, the heart knows its own bitterness and a stranger does not share its joy. The very personal experience of bitterness in a person or joy in a person can't be shared by anyone else. Verse 11, the house of the wicked will be destroyed, but the tent of the upright will flourish. Judgment is upon the wicked, blessing upon the obedient. A continual theme throughout Scripture. Verse 12, there is a way which seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. So people in their ignorance, because they lack the wisdom of God, make bad decisions, and it produces devastation in their lives, even though they know, uh, they don't know the right way. They make bad decisions because of they are misdirected by the wisdom of the world. It produces death in each person who pursues that direction. Verse 13, even in laughter, the heart may be in pain and the end of joy may be grief. So this is true in human experience. Pain in the heart can conceal, can be concealed by laughter, but Grief is very real, and everyone who's experienced grief knows the pain of grief in the heart. Verse 14, the backslider in heart will have his fill of his own ways, but a good man will be satisfied with his. Someone who strays from the Lord continues to encounter all kinds of problems because of bad choices. Remember, you always reap what you sow. But when you sow in righteousness, you will be satisfied without those ways of the world. Verse 15, the naive believes everything, but the sensible man considers his steps. Another exhortation to the people today that believe every fake news story that comes down the line, every conspiracy theory just can't believe everything you hear or everything you read. You've got to use discernment and the word of God to sort it out. Verse 16, a wise man is cautious and turns away from evil, but a fool is arrogant and careless. The way you handle news, information, reveals whether you are wise or foolish. You are full of pride and you are careless about the way you make decisions. It shows you are a fool. But if you're cautious and you avoid evil, you are a wise man. Verse 17, a quick-tempered man acts foolishly and a man of evil de devices is hated. So we have a word against uh, having an anger problem, quick temper make foolish decisions, act rashly, and you end up having a bad reputation. People hate that behavior. Verse 18, the naive inherit foolishness, but the sensible are crowned with knowledge. 
So we have again the difference between the naive and the sensible, or the foolish and the wise. It's very real in our culture. Verse 19, the evil will bow down before the good and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. Word of God says that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that is a reality that everyone will face. All evil people will acknowledge the righteousness of Jesus Christ and his people. Verse 20, the poor is hated even by his neighbor, but those who love the rich are many. So this is commonly true, that uh, poor people are despised or looked down upon, but uh, rich people, in spite of all their faults, are looked up to. Verse 21, he who despises his neighbor sins, but happy is he who is gracious to the poor. So we shouldn't look down upon the poor, despise our poor neighbor, but we should be gracious to the poor uh, because uh, we will be full of joy and peace for being gracious to the poor, but we will be sinning by despising our neighbor's needs. Verse 22, will they not go astray who devise evil, but kindness and truth will be to those who devise good. You cannot sow evil without reaping the results of going astray. But those who sow good, who live a righteous life, will experience kindness and truth. Verse 23, in all labor there is profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. Hard work provides for individuals, their families, and even for other people, but only talking and laziness produces poverty. Verse 24, the crown of the wise is their riches, but the folly of fools is foolishness. So wisdom is brings a, a, a rich lifestyle in the eyes of the Lord, all kinds of grace available to the wise in everything they do, but the foolishness of rejecting God's wisdom and walking in the ways of the world produces folly. I was uh, watching a news article uh, on TV where people were talking about, oh, now that their their extra unemployment has run out, they won't be able to make it by. But they've known this has been coming for months and months and months and still haven't gone out and uh, gone to work at the jobs that are available everywhere. And now they're complaining about how they won't be able to make it without government help. That's foolishness and laziness. Verse 25, a truthful witness saves lives, but he who utters lies is treacherous. By speaking truth, we can actually save lives of people. But by lying, we can put people in jeopardy. Verse 26, in the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence and his children will have refuge. So we have the importance of the fear, the respect, the holy reverence for God. It brings a strong confidence, the scripture says, makes us confident. Even so, our children will be protected. Verse 27, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that one may avoid the snares of death. So again, we need this holy reverence and fear of the Lord which produces life in us, a fountain of life, this, the spring of living water Jesus spoke about, that you can avoid sin and death. Verse 28, in a multitude of people is a king's glory, but in the dearth of people is a prince's ruin. So we see kings uh, are, are important by a lot of people that, serve them, but not so if no one serves and supports him. 
Verse 29, he who is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who is quick-tempered exalts folly. Another word toward those who are quick-tempered, foolish, making rash decisions. The person who's slow to anger proves the wisdom that is in their life. Verse 30, a tranquil heart is life to the body, but passion is rottenness to the bones. The peace of God is so important. The innermost being of a person is their heart, our soul, our spirit. We need the peace of God that brings life to our physical bodies. Scripture teaches that. But when we are filled with anxiety, it is damaging. This says rottenness to the bones. Physical health will be damaged by the anxieties, the lack of peace in our lives. Verse 31, he who oppresses the poor taunts his maker, but he who is gracious to the needy honors him. Here's one of many references to God's desire that, that we minister and serve the poor. If we oppress the poor by ignoring their needs or even making it more difficult for them to live, we are actually mocking or taunting God. But when we are gracious, when we are generous with the needy, we honor the Lord. That's something we should always remember. Verse 32, the wicked is thrust down by his wrongdoing, but the righteous has a refuge when he dies. So the sin of man produces death in that person. But when we live a righteous life, it produces a life for us, eternal life, even when we die physically. Verse 33, wisdom rests in the heart of one who has understanding, but in the hearts of fools it is made known. So we have wisdom in those who have uh, that revelation from God in their heart, in their, in their soul, in their mind. But the same, the opposite goes for fools when they don't have wisdom. That it's so, so tr easy to see that that lack of wisdom is producing death in them. Verse thirty-four: Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. We hear that verse quoted many times because it's always true. When a nation serves the Lord and walks in the principles of the Word of God. It, is, it will be exalted because God exalts uh, the humble, those who seek after him, gives them grace. But if that nation rejects the Lord and lives in sin, it's a disgrace, and that will be obvious. Final verse 35, the king's favor is toward a servant who acts wisely, but his anger is toward him who acts shamefully. So even a king will reward a wise servant, but will reject the behavior of the foolish and be angry with him. So over and over again in Proverbs 14, we have seen these, these instructions contrasting the upright and the wicked. And people need to wake up and realize that this teaching from the Word of God is for every person and will save them from the foolishness of choosing your own way and walking in rebellion toward God. Choose life. Choose the wisdom of God that is revealed in the Word of God. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow.